back to my channel. Today, we are doing a video about goals, intentions, resolutions for 2021. I understand that I may be a little bit late on the resolution train, but it was kind of done on purpose. I feel like most of us go into the new year super motivated, pumped. We're exposed to all these motivational quotes, all these other people's resolutions. And then like two weeks go by and we're all like, mm. We end up forgetting, we get off track, we give up, we get overwhelmed. This is something called resolution fatigue, okay? So I'm coming in here late in the game to hopefully spark you back up, get motivated to get back on those resolutions. And let me tell you something, there is never a wrong time to set goals and resolutions. No matter what has happened, if you fell off track, it's never too late to get back on track. It's never gonna be a perfect journey and don't get discouraged by basically stopping your resolution or pausing your resolution because you really want to focus on what you can change, not what you can't change. So what happened last week, yesterday, the past weeks, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's in the past, it's untouchable, you can't change it. But what you could change is what you do right now. So you can make the decision right now to start again and just keep going and that's all that matters okay so in this video i'll be going over my personal goals intentions and resolutions i'll try to be as specific as possible also with how i intend to make those resolutions happen obviously this is very personal to myself you don't have to have all the same resolutions but maybe this will give you some ideas and inspire you for some resolutions of your own a lot of these are self-development resolutions, not really too much health and wellness focus, although there are some. But if you enjoy this video, I talk about a lot of topics like this on my personal Instagram page. So make sure you go ahead and you check it out if you enjoy this video. All right, number one resolution. So this is actually something that I have not really struggled with as much in the past, but since the pandemic and lockdown happened, I have found myself on my phone, on social media, going down the social media rabbit hole so much more. So my resolution is to limit my screen time to four hours or less every single day. I know four hours sounds like a lot, but my current screen time was like eight hours a day. So it was obviously not good not good it's a little bit difficult for me because i also work on social media like i have to post on instagram and stuff but still it doesn't take me eight hours you know like maybe an hour max a day answering dms comments stuff like that so yeah i really want to put the focus on being more present and not getting sucked into the phone you have to remember social media and phones they are created to be addicting so if you don't check yourself like if you don't pay attention to that it's very easy to just get sucked into it and i have found that when my screen time is high i'm way more anxious like i just don't feel as good i don't feel as productive I feel more sluggish i get more headaches like tension headaches from looking at the screen it's just not good plus minimizing my screen time gives me more time to do other things like i complain all the time about not having enough time to do something and then i look at my screen time and i'm like bitch Mm -mm. So here are some actionable steps that I'm currently taking and will continue taking to hopefully lower my screen time. Number one is actually using the screen time option on iPhone. So if you have an iPhone, there's a way that you can set a uh, limit to your screen time. It doesn't work all the time because sometimes it'll pop up and say your screen time is up and I'm like, ignore today. Like I just, you know, don't always listen to it. But it does help in reminding me sometimes when I've been on my phone too much. You can also set specific time limits like after 10 p.m. or before 9 a.m. You know, so you're not using your phone first thing in the morning and night when you wake up the second step i'm taking well i haven't really been doing this lately but i'm gonna start doing this okay i'm not gonna leave my phone charging next to my bed so i find that most of the times when i fall into social media rabbit holes it's right when i wake up because i wake up i grab my phone it helps me wake up but then i end up spending like an hour on my phone and that's just not good and then before bed especially because i would read on my phone before bed i just got a kindle so i'm not gonna be reading on my phone as much anymore but before bed and in the morning are the times where i'm on my phone the most so by leaving my phone charging outside of the bedroom like in the office in the living room it kind of eliminates that possibility altogether and the third actionable step is more for like during work i use this app called forest and it helps me stay focused so it's an app that basically you set a timer and it grows a tree and if you leave the app the tree burns down so it's kind of like obviously you can leave the app and nothing bad doesn't happen but still i get motivated because i don't want my little tree to burn down so i'll set a timer for like an hour and i'm not allowed to, like i have to leave my phone there with that app and i can't like go on social media or take a little instagram break i always do this i do like 10 minutes of solid hard work and i reward myself with 30 minutes of scrolling on social media like 
it doesn't work that way. <clears throat> Number two is a resolution that I always say I'm gonna do every single year and then I don't end up doing it and it is 100% my own fault, my choice, it's just my priorities are not good, but it is to read one book a week. And yes, it sounds like a lot, some people are like, oh, that's a lot of reading. But then I look at my screen time on my phone and I'm like, I can totally make time to read and I'm spending that much time looking at a screen, scrolling on social media. And honestly, this year, it's been going good for me so far. So in the first a week of the year, I read Man's Search for Meaning, which is a great book. Highly recommend. I'm currently reading Essentialism, which is more of like a like self-development book. So I like to alt- I have a- okay, wait. So I have like a list of books I want to read, and it's a mix of like business, like strategy books, and then I have a lot of like self-development, like philosophical books. So they're not really about work created, they're more about like personal growth and development. And I do have some good fiction books thrown in there too, just to give me variety, because Obviously, I love self-development books, but it's like a lot for your brain to take in. So I don't want to like oversaturate my brain. And some weeks, I'll give my mind a rest and just read a good old fiction book. Like to me, there's nothing better than curling up with a good book and be like basically taken away to another world. Ugh, it's just the best. So how am I achieving this goal of one book a week, which is, by the way, 52 books in a year. So number one is lowering my screen time, which is kind of like what we talked about in resolution number one. So every time I go to pick up my phone and start scrolling, I try to remind myself, shit, you know, I can be reading my book right now and I put my phone to the side and I grab my book. Number two is I have embraced ebooks. So I've always been a physical book kind of gal. Like, I'm like, I love books. I love small books. I love physical books, which is great. But the reality is that ebooks have made reading so much more accessible to me especially when i have it on my phone because my phone goes with me everywhere so if i'm ever somewhere like i'm in the car or i'm in line somewhere i'm like shit i could just whip out my phone and read my book whereas if you have a physical book you might not take it with you everywhere and also at night i like to read when i'm in bed and if johnny's sleeping and i don't want to turn on the light you know it just makes it a lot easier i did just order a kindle kind of i don't know how to say it because sometimes i'll be on my phone reading my book i'll get a notification of like something and then i get distracted so the Kindle will help me stay focused on the book, but ebooks have definitely made it easier. And also when you order an ebook, you get it instantly. You don't have to wait for it to come in the mail. So that's really good. Resolution number three is stay hydrated. Listen. Listen. I'm one dehydrated ass bitch. I have always struggled with drinking water. I even have stickers in my office, on my computer, in the mirror to remind me to drink water. It's just really hard for me. I don't have to explain like why it's so hard to drink water. I'm sure we all know. But here are a few actionable steps I am taking to try to drink my water more often. Number one, water with lemon, ice, and a straw. So like lemon already spruces up my water a lot. But when I add ice and a straw, it's easier for me to just lean over and drink from the straw than like reach out my hand and grab the water and then drink it. Mm -mm. <laughs> Number two is drinking sparkling water. I love that shit. I know a lot of people don't love sparkling water. For me, it makes the water drinking experience just so much better. Number three is adding like flavors to the water. So kind of like how when I add lemon and then I'll use my BCAs to help me get water in as well. As many of you have probably already heard or know, BCAs are great for your muscles. So if you take them while working out, it's great for muscle repair, muscle recovery. But BCAs are also really beneficial if you just take them in throughout the day and for me huge plus is that they help me get my water in and they satisfy my sweet tooth which is like freaking amazing and the raspberry sorbet baby CAs that's the flavor I personally works on Fluence Best and we try different samples it's part of my athlete series and I just really wanted to make something that tasted like a treat and with only 16 calories I mean it's pretty damn good when I'm drinking it to like help up my water intake, I'll add double the water. So instead of 400 milliliters, milliliters, I'll add 800 milliliters. And I believe that's like four whole cups of water, which was already really good. And then it's more of like a subtle flavor, but oh, it just makes me actually want to drink my water. Like really well. So many people have already loved it. I love it. Everyone else loves it. So if you want to try it for yourself, you can shop through a link in my description. Thank you so much if you choose to shop through my link and support. Yo girl. <laughs> All right, my number four resolution is, I would like to have two days completely off of work a week. Right now, it's a little bit difficult to do that because we are currently in the process of launching Date Thrive, which if you don't know Date Thrive, okay, 
it's my very own workout app. I mean, by the time you're seeing this video, it might be live already, so make sure you check the description. But right now, it's a little bit difficult because there's a lot going on. But once things kind of stabilize, I would like to have two whole days off of work a week. Basically, my whole life is the work. So it's kind of hard to draw that line between personal life and work. And I just feel this constant pressure to always be online, always be available, always take on every single opportunity and always just work on something. But as I have learned over the past year, after having multiple burnouts, you know, that's not always the best way of doing something. And having days off and taking rest and a break from work can actually make you way more productive and just happier as a human being. Plus, it'll give me more time to finish reading all my books. So that's something I'm really looking forward to doing once we get this app launched and hopefully I'll get my work life balance back very soon. Bye, my next resolution is becoming a little bit more of a minimalist. So buying less stuff. I feel like I have unfortunately fallen prey to a little bit of consumerism. It might be because over the last year in the pandemic, I just felt like we all collectively as a society needed to fill that gap within ourselves. So like Amazon shopping was like through the roof. I completely understand and acknowledge that this comes from a very, very, very privileged place. Like I have done well for myself and we are successful to the point where I feel like I can order and buy things freely. I have disposable income, but more is not always better. And I just feel like accumulating stuff has just increased the clutter and has not really made me any happier. And I'm sure any of my girls who have been to a Marshalls, TJ Maxx, Home good or Target, no, no. Like once you're in there, you know, you get caught up and you wanna buy everything because everything is so cute. But it's such a short term happiness that doesn't really mean that much in the end. And I just feel like it's much better to have less things that are intentional, that you really thought about, that really mean something to you, than to have a bunch of meaningless things that you just forget about. Like I, I've been finding things in my house that I'm like, oh, I don't even remember where I bought this. And I don't want that, you know? Like I want each item to be special and to have a meaning. So the way I'm doing this is every single time I want to buy something, instead of being impulsive, I'm like, oh, I want this. I just take a step back and I think to myself, do I really need this? Do I really want this? Am I just trying to fill some other kind of hole in my soul, you know? Like I just give myself some space. And a lot of the times, once like the excitement wears off, I end up realizing like, I could live without this, you know what I mean? Like, I already forgot about it, I don't really need it. And I just feel like this will also help me release attachments to physical things and focus more on the things that really matter. Plus, it'll be better for the world, the environment, like, it just has a lot of benefits to not be so consumeristic. Is that the word I'm looking for? All right, and the last, well, not the last resolution, the almost last resolution is to eat one big ass salad every single day. So I struggle with getting my veggies in because I'm not a veggie lover, but I have found a love for salads. And salads don't have to be boring, okay? If you go on Pinterest and you look up salad recipes, there are some good salad recipes in there. So actually, okay, originally my resolution was to have a big ass salad every single day. That's a little bit difficult for me at the moment. So I made it five times a week. So five times a week, I would like to have one salad. It could be as one of my meals, like a lunch, or it could be a snack, or it could be a side salad. One is to just get those veggies in. And I have found that I feel more energetic, happier when I really focus on getting lots of veggies and nutrients in my diet. It's much easier to add things like to your diet, like you're gonna add a salad than to restrict yourself and take things away. Because when you end up eating the salad, you're gonna end up feeling so full and like good anyway that you might not want to snack or eat other things. And number seven, my last resolution. This one's a little bit funny because right before this video, I was like stressing about some dumb shit. But number seven is stop sweating the small stuff. I am a naturally anxious person, but I do believe that just because you were raised a certain way or you were born a certain way or you've always been a certain way, it doesn't mean you have to stay that way. Like I do believe we are able to change ourselves if we really try. And I really am trying to work on being less anxious. I'm not stressing about like, stupid things so much especially when it comes to like my work and business i let little things like really stress me out and it's dumb because stress doesn't actually get me anywhere you know it just makes me lose my focus it makes me less productive so it's like 
what's the point? Obviously, I don't have all the answers to how to stress less yet, but what has helped me a lot is just focusing on what is in my control and what isn't. And what's kind of helped me with this mentality is stoicism. And I have this book called The Daily Stoic, and it's really, really good. It's not really a book that you read like straight through. It just has a different passage for every single day. And stoicism really pushes forward the idea that like you can find happiness by like what's that quote that says, oh give me the strength to change what I can and accept what I can't. So that's basically the whole idea and it's something that I really need to hammer home into my little head because I struggle with that concept, especially being control free. Like a lovely set of qualities I have here, lovely combination. So I highly recommend that book if that is also something you want to do. And yeah, all right, so those are basically my year's resolutions. I think there are like seven. That might sound like a lot. I don't try to do all of these at the exact same time. Like sometimes I'll focus on one more than the other, but hopefully by the end of this year, I'll come out of it being a little bit more wise, a little bit less stressed, and a little bit better read. <laughs> and more hydrated, of course. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Maybe gave you some ideas, and don't forget to check out Daily Thrive, because by the time you're seeing this, it might be live, yeah. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.